So yes, is Ryan Garcia a complete idiot or a genius? Yes, now he's no question the biggest name in boxing. After apparently trolling the whole world and dismantling the unanimous decision Haney in the most talked about fight in years, Garcia has become the ultimate superstar. But there really are only two words for the monumental build-up of this very intriguing fight, and those words are fucking mental. Yes, we didn't know what was going on, did we? Garcia was twitching in interviews, suggesting a possible addiction or health issue, something strange had happened to his voice. I can't believe I got dropped or the, the fear of embarrassment. None of that got to me in that moment. I knew he was going to come back. I even told him, you'll be back. Remember he was all, don't ever talk to me again. There we are. And on top of that, he was apparently smoking weed whilst in camp, drinking heavy most days, tweeting like a total fucking fruitcake. Look at this, aliens, robots, fuck me. And in general, just saying the maddest things. I drink and I smoke weed. I'm not in possession of my phone. I can't get access to my Instagram. My cards are locked. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. Ah, 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 ah. I feel so fucking bad for introducing Jake Paul to boxing. I fucked up. Yeah, I know, a bit nuts, innit? Although that last bit about Jack Paul, I do agree with, he really did fuck things up there. Anyway, so in a nutshell, the whole world had massive concerns for young Ryan, not just for the Haney fight, but for his general well-being. Uh, well, I say the whole world, other than Oscar De La Hoya, he didn't really seem to give a monkeys, did he? Look at his face, he's thinking, hey, don't sound great, but he's going to make me plenty Benjamin, so oh well, fuck it. Anyway, yes, the whole thing went on and on, getting stranger and stranger, with the final nail in the coffin being weigh-in day, where Ryan pretended to drink a beer and missed weight by a whopping 3.2 pounds. This invoked the feeling that he probably hadn't trained for the fight and now this whole crazy scenario was going to end in a very tragic crescendo because Haney has always been the total opposite, a consummate professional and after the pro grey win looking to be in the prime of his life. Myself and many concluded there was only one outcome incoming, a Devin Haney destruction. But then fight night came. Ryan warmed up with an orchestra in his changing room, as you do, and then at the sound of the bell, barely seconds into round one, we all said the same thing. Well, I'm fucked. So in a nutshell, he completely pulled the tits over our eyes, didn't he? Because let's be honest, he must have trained hard, he must have been on the ball and the mind games clearly pulled Haney into the fight that Garcia wanted. With Devin coming forward in the mid stages, chasing a knockout compared to his usual cruise control boxing that regularly ends in a standard and a little bit fucking boring unanimous decision for Haney. It opened up a can of worms on Devin's chin going forward but that's for another day. Now it's the Garcia show baby and by the by, Daddy Garcia was rather happy about all this. He was amazing. I thought, well done. Well done. Oh, really? Fuck you. you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're my son, you piece of shit. What are you talking about? Fuck you. You know you're a piece of shit. Now what are you going to say? Who can't move? Who can't move? Fucking Devin Haney? Fuck you. Now who you got? Who do you got? Jerron Ennis. Jerron Ennis. Who? Jerron Ennis. How about Pitbull? You know he's good. Jerron Ennis is good. They're all good. That's what happened. It's a good performance. Oh, Sorry. I know you're Sorry. Bloody hell, you see where Ryan gets it from, can't you? He's up and down like a fucking grasshopper. Shit himself at the sound of Boots Ennis, didn't he? Anyway, then Garcia showed up to the post-fight presser and we were expecting him to say, Ah, see, I gotcha. It was all a wind-up, but it kind of left us with more questions than answers. This is why people need to stop believing everything on the internet and stop, you know, living in a false reality. At the end of the day, there's a lot of real shit going on. You know, the last thing you should worry about is a kid acting crazy on the internet. Real shit is going on in the world. Open your eyes. Yeah, so I don't know about you, but I'm still double confused. First, he says, This is why people need to stop believing everything on the internet and stop, you know, living in a false reality. Okay, and then he says, At the end of the day, that shit was real. So yes, that's just left me even more puzzled. I still don't know if it was real or a total load of bollocks that build up. Plus there's more on top of that. Back to the weigh-in and Ryan says it wasn't a beer, it was just apple juice. But then in the Valuetainment podcast after the fight, he says it was a beer. The day of the fight, I drink a blue moon. I was <laughs> chilling, bro. So do you know what I mean? I'm all skew with it. What are the truths in all this? Is he a compulsive liar? Because it just sounds like the old Tyson Fury effect to me. One day it's something, the next day it's something else. But I'll tell you what I do call bollocks on this. You know, I, I did what I felt I needed to do to feel okay. And so I kept it and I did whatever I wanted. And I walked through the fire and still held it down and still beat 
fucking Devin Haney and still drink every day and still beat him. Yeah, let's be honest, that's a complete load of waffle, and it? We know that didn't happen. I mean, I drank every day for a week in Magaluf. After that, I could barely find the energy to wipe my fucking ass, let alone beat a world champion boxer. Bloody hell. And one thing's for certain, Derek James wouldn't have stood for that anyway. So yeah, that's just another lie, innit? But yes, after all this, after the antics and the chaos, after beating what many considered to be a potential pound-for-pound -pound great, and becoming the most talked-about athlete in the world by far, ultimately, is he a genius or a complete? an utter idiot. Well, I suppose you got to give it to him. He's a ruddy genius, ain't he? Now, before I give him his props, I will say one thing. Coming in three pounds over is bang out of order. It was a stellar performance and I'll take nothing away from that and you never know, the outcome may have been the same anyway. But still, it's a mega advantage whatever way you swing it. And whether or not you think Devin himself is a weight bully, he still deserves a rematch on an even playing field. But Ryan's taken a liberty saying he won't get one. I suppose suppose it is what it is. But then again, this was another part of the genius because he was happy to scrap the belt and clearly wanted to come in comfortable. Yes, it's definitely wrong and bad sportsmanship, but you know what, now that Ryan's won, the sad truth for Devin is, no one really gives a shit. It's apparent in his face the effects the tank fight weight had on him, so he definitely knew what he was doing this time around, and it worked to perfection. Regardless of the bad sportsmanship, as mentioned, he's now cemented his place as today's face of boxing, because now everyone knows who Ryan Garcia is and nobody does headlines and numbers quite like this man. The day after the fight, the highlights on DAZN's YouTube channel had reached an unbelievable 8 million views and is still going now. The tank fight pulled in 1.2 million pay-per-view buys and I'd imagine this is the same if not more with the monumental build-up. So clearly Ryan's got the Mayweather effect down to a T and he's even sprinkled in his own little bit of chaos. If I'm totally honest, I found it a little bit uncomfortable watching him capitulate in the run-up to this fight but if your aim is to earn as much money as possible, sell the fight and get as many eyes on it as you possibly can, then he absolutely nailed it and will be reaping the rewards for the rest of his career. Plus on top of that, he even put a big bet on himself, didn't he? A whopping two million at six to one apparently, thanks a lot, bloody hell, what's that? Six times two, he's won about six, two, eight, four, seven, eight. Well, he's more than doubled his money, ain't he? I'm shit at maths. But yes, superb stuff. And you know what else? In a sport where the best very rarely fight the best, Ryan deserves the biggest credit for taking on the two most dominant forces around their weight classes. He fell short against Tank, but this was a genius and gutsy move to get himself back on top that paid off. Now, I think we can all agree he does talk a hefty amount of bollocks, but once again, mention any of the most lucrative names in combat sports like Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Mayweather, McGregor, and they've all talked plenty of smack at the end of the day, ultimately this is what sells to the masses. So if you have got the cojones to do it and the ability to back it up, this is where superstardom arises from. Genius stuff. So yes, all this had the makeup of a Hollywood movie, the old Ryan Garcia show over the past few months. And whether you like him or not, regardless of the tank loss, regardless of missing weight, he's now living up to his name of the king. Because there's no question, he is the money. And everyone will be clambering for the Garcia fight now. But what does he do next? Will he bother staying at super lightweight or will he move up to welterweight? Well, firstly, he's openly said that Haney's not getting a rematch. He wants the tank fight at around 144, but that ain't gonna happen in a million fucking years. So names that have been mentioned are Tiafimo Lopez, the ferocious Subrayo Matias, Conor Ben, and the sensational Boots Ennis. But early predictions, I think he's well up against it with Matias and Boots, and even though they're great fighters, they're not really the biggest names yet, so it's high risk and low reward. He's called out Conor Ben for a UK fight, but fuck knows about Ben and his UK situation at the minute. And Tiafimo is plausible, but he looked a bit crap in his last fight, and anyway, Garcia clearly struggles to make that weight, so his time there might be done. It's a bit of a mystery. Looking on though from a promotional standpoint, you'd be mad to take an extremely difficult fight next because why would you risk losing his newfound status? Maybe we can expect something that plays a little more into his hands, a kind of very winnable fight at welterweight. But also, you can bet your bottom dollar he'll be eyeing up the Saudi situation. He's almost certainly already on the double excellent Turkey's radar, which could mean a possible Crawford showdown in the future should he beat Madrimov. And it don't get much bigger than that. 
So we'll have to wait and see what's next for the man, but Garcia is now officially king by name and king by nature. He is running the show and he doesn't give a monkey's how he does it. The genius thing is, we still don't know if it's all a big hoax, but there we are. Now don't forget to check out the old Sparko star, got you some blinding clobber over there, and I'll see you all soon. Toodaloo for now. Peace.